As of this filming, we've recently passed my Affinity birthday. November 2019 was the first time that I downloaded Affinity Designer, which means that I've been using the Affinity Suite for about three years now. The question is though, is the Affinity Suite still worth it in 2023 or is it time to switch to something else? It was not long ago that the Affinity Suite had their first major update and with that brought a whole new excitement to the apps. But in the grand scheme of things, is the Affinity Suite still worth it? Well, to be fair, no one can actually tell you what app you should use. Only you know your situation and what you need, so only you can make that decision. So if you don't know, the Affinity Suite comprises of Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher. So each do specific things within the apps, but also there is some overlap with them as well. But you can actually switch between them quite quickly. And that actually brings me on to my first reason that the Affinity Suite is still worth it. And that is the communication between the apps. So in Designer here, let's say for example, I'm creating this thing and let's say I needed to do something in Affinity Photo. Now there's two things that I could actually do. Affinity Designer itself has a pixel persona that we could go into that has some of the tools that Affinity Photo has. Or if we own both of the apps, all I have to do is go to file and down to edit in photo. Now, if Affinity Photo is already open, then instantly that file will be opened in Affinity Photo. If however, the app is not open, then it'll open it for you just so you can make your edits. So almost instantly, I can now start working on this in Affinity Photo. And let's say we did what we needed to do and we wanted to go back to Affinity Designer. All we would do is head over to file edit in designer and it would switch back to designer and have the file where we need it. Now Affinity Publisher works slightly different in that if we have Affinity Publisher here and we were creating something up in the top, we actually have a designer persona and a photo persona, which means that we can actually switch between the three apps without leaving publisher. All of these personas have basically everything that the other apps have. It does mean you have to own all three and have them installed, but really what it means is that you can just open Publisher and do everything that you need to do without actually having to switch between apps and only switch between these personas. But what about the tools? I can hear you asking it already. The tools in this software are basically everything and more of what I need personally for what I use it for, but that might actually be different for you. There was a time that we were all waiting and hoping for a shape builder tool like Adobe Illustrator, and we have that now. To me, the tools are gonna to be personal preference. Some will prefer the tools that are in Adobe Illustrator. Some will prefer Inkscape. It really comes down to just testing the apps yourself and knowing what you need. If you don't know what you need, then the best thing to do is try all of the apps. All the apps are either free or have a free trial. So what I suggest is try all of them see which one you get on with the most, see which one has the things that you actually need and go with whichever one fits your personal style better. For me, the Affinity Suite is the most user-friendly out of all the apps that I've tried. I've spent years in the Adobe Suite and always found things not in the places that I wanted them to be. So if I was searching for a feature, it wouldn't be where I would think it would be. Whereas in the Affinity Suite, everything generally is where you would expect it to be. So overall, this brings me very nicely into my next reason that Affinity Suite is still worth it. And that is the ease of use. So because all the tools are where you'd expect them to be and all the apps communicate together very well, and because the interface, in my opinion, is so user-friendly, the whole suite is much easier to use compared to other apps. Yes, when you first start using it, you will be a bit slow. It will be kind of hard to find what you're looking for, especially if you've come from another app. But personally, I feel you'll get to grips with the Affinity Suite a lot faster than the other apps because the user-friendliness of it, not a word, is definitely so much better. Oh, and don't forget, the Affinity Suite is a one-off payment. I mean, yes, it's not free, but a one-off payment is so much better than a subscription model, like someone else. Not gonna name any names. <clears throat> Adobe. But seriously, having the option to pay for the apps that you want or to pay for all of them at once at a discount, is so much better than a subscription service, in my opinion, because you're actually getting the apps that you need rather than having to pay for all of them. But a slight note with this is that you will have to pay for major updates. Now, while Affinity Suite has been available, we've only had one major update, which was very recently. So in order to upgrade, you will need to pay for the upgrade. However, you don't have to upgrade. Just be aware that your previous version will no longer get updates, but you're still free to use that as much as you want, as long as it's got the tools that you need. I know some people who have not upgraded to version two yet, because most of the stuff that are new in version two, they don't need in their working life. So they're happy sticking with what they have, until they want to upgrade, which I think definitely is a much better way of working. And not only that, but I haven't even mentioned the iPad apps yet. 
I mean, this is sounding like a sales pitch advert, but seriously, the iPad apps, which are included if you buy the bundle of all three apps, you get the iPad apps for free, have all the functionality of the desktop apps, which means that no matter where you are, if you've got your iPad, you can get as much work done on the iPad as you would do at a desktop. Seriously, since I got one, all of these graphics and thumbnails have been created on the iPad. And it means that no matter where I am, I can actually get just as much work done as I would if I was at my PC. So on top of all of those things, the iPad apps actually make it so much better. All right, I've given kind of rave reviews about the Affinity Suite, but let's tell you why it might not be worth it for you. And the first one is if you're working with others and sending files back and forth. But mainly if the other people are not using the Affinity Suite, and let's say they're using the Adobe suite, it will make things very difficult for you. So yes, you can open Photoshop files and Illustrator files in the Affinity apps, and you can save files that will open in Photoshop and Illustrator, but they don't work as well as you'd want them to. For example, text isn't always as editable as you want it to be. So when you transfer something over from, let's say Affinity Designer over to Photoshop, even if you try and get the text as editable as possible, it still won't be like Photoshop text. So you often you'll find that it has to be remade in Photoshop. Hopefully in the future, we're able to get better suited files so that we can send things over to the Adobe apps. But for now, it is definitely a downside. So if you are working with others and you're having to send files back and forth, your hands are kind of tied there. And with that actually is another downside, which I've heard from quite a few people. And that is the image trace tool. So I know a lot of people like using the image trace tool in Adobe Illustrator. And personally, I don't really miss it anymore. I think I've just got used to other methods of getting around using the image trace tool. And to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if the Affinity Suite ends up having it very soon. But I know for some people, it is definitely a deal breaker that the Affinity Suite doesn't have the image trace tool yet. Oh yeah, and, and there is kind of one more upside to the Affinity Suite. Now, I don't really want to use the word innovation, but I'm going to have to because I can't think of a better word. Serif aren't reinventing the wheel. A lot of the tools that are in the suite are also available in most, if not all, the other apps, which is why I didn't want to use the word innovation. But what they are doing is they're making design much more user friendly and a much lower barrier to entry as well, which is a big thing. It may not seem like it sometimes, but they do seem to listen to their users. And to be fair, for a team their size to create the apps that they have is amazing. So props to them. But don't get me wrong, but don't get me wrong, swapping to any software will take some time getting used to, no matter who you are. But overall, I think the Affinity Suite is the easiest to get used to, or at least has been the quickest for me to get used to. So in conclusion, is the Affinity Suite still worth it in 2023? Yeah, it, it definitely is. And it most likely will continue to be for as long as it's alive. So hopefully this has given you some information about why the Affinity Suite is still worth it in 2023. Like I said earlier, the what is best for you may not be best for someone else. So if you're really unsure of which app is best for you, try them all out, get their free trials, use them for a while, see which one fits you best. And once you've tried them all and you see that the Affinity Suite is the best, then you can come check out the rest of the videos on this channel to learn more about the Affinity Suite like this one right here. But if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below what your actual drawbacks of the Affinity Suite is. Or if you've already swapped to the Affinity Suite, what have you swapped from? Or if you're swapping to something else, what are you swapping to? It'd be really interesting to find out. But as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.